Do you adore strawberries? Oh yes, aromatic, sweet, and juicy. What's not to love? Mm. Hi, I'm Ben and welcome to my garden. If you want strawberries with outstanding flavour, and I mean outrageously good flavour, then you're going to have to grow them yourself. No idea where to begin? Don't worry, that's where I come in. Come on, let me show you how. Strawberries grow very well in the ground or in raised beds, but they are also a natural choice for container growing for several reasons. They look really good grown this way, especially within, say, a strawberry tower or against a sunny fence. And strawberries love a well-drained soil, so by growing them in containers, we can ensure just that. Before we get started, let's take a look at the different types of strawberries you can grow. There are two main types and I'll be planting a container with each of them today. Now the first group is ever-bearing or perpetual strawberries. As the name suggests, these crop over a longer time, from about early summer right through to autumn. They won't give lots of berries all at once, rather little bits of pickings here and there throughout the growing season. This means it's great because it spaces out your crop nice and evenly. Now, the berries tend to be a little bit smaller, but they are considered the most delicious. Then there are the June bearers or the summer fruiting strawberries. I've got some here and these ones have already got some uh, beautiful strawberries on look. These guys tend to produce all of their fruits all at once within about a two to three week period. That could be any time from early summer through to mid to late summer. June bearing or summer fruiting strawberries tend to have slightly larger berries and because they come all at once they're ideal for say jam making, canning or perhaps dehydrating into delicious strawberry crisps. There's also a third lesser known category of strawberries called day neutral strawberries which aren't affected by day length. They simply crop once they're big enough and if the conditions are suitable. Oh, and then there are this lot, growing behind me here in this stone retaining wall. These are alpine or wild strawberries. And unlike other strawberries, they grow quite happily in the shade and can be left to pretty much get on with it. The fruits are absolutely delicious, but they are tiny, so probably not worth growing in containers. They would, however, make a fantastic ground cover under, for example, shrubs. Right, let's get on and plant. Now today I'm planting these uh, container raised strawberries. They're ready for sale any time from sort of spring and then throughout the summer and you just plant them as soon as you get them. Don't leave them hanging around. They've been given a really good soaking so the root balls are nice and moist and I'm planting them into these shallow containers here. Now I've chosen a wider, shallower container because these aren't especially deep rooted, so there's no point wasting all that potting mix. And in a container this size, I should get, I would reckon, three plants, so that would give us a nice little display. Then for the potting mix, I'm just using an all-purpose peat-free mix. Don't be tempted to use soil which will just sort of compact with time and won't be very free draining. Something like this beautifully crumbly potting mix here is just the job. To help it along, I'm going to add in some uh, blood, fish and bone meal. This um, is an organic waste product of the food industry and I've read up the instructions for how much to add and it's just a very scant handful for this amount of potting mix. This will give it a really good start and uh, our strawberries should really enjoy rooting into this. Now you could just uh, go without the blood, fish and bone meal and just use a uh, high potassium tomato feed for example and that way you could just add your strawberries into the same feeding regime as your other fruiting vegetables like say peppers and of course tomatoes. If you're a vegan gardener and you don't want to use blood, fish and bone, there are plenty of organic alternatives available. Just make sure that what you choose is relatively high in potassium and not too high in nitrogen, because nitrogen, if there's too much of it, will encourage foliage over those flowers and fruits. We're all filled up, now we're ready to plant. When planting strawberries, it's really important that the crown of the plant that just means where the leaves emerge from is at soil level. You can see here in this pot, it's just sitting on the soil here and we want to replicate that in the potting mix as we plant. So dig your hole and then pop it in 
just make sure that the potting mix isn't, isn't sort of um, covering up that crown. If your plants are leaning a bit to one side like they are here, then plant it so that this dangles over the container. That way it won't crowd out the centre here and those fruits will be seductively displayed and much easier to pick. When planting into containers, strawberries can go a little bit closer than they might otherwise be in the ground. You can go as close as eight inches, that's 20 centimetres apart, without any problems because there's much more goodness in this potting mix here. Be sure to firm your strawberry plants in as you go and leave a bit of a gap at the top to allow for watering. Now the final thing to finish these off is to apply a mulch. Strawberries are called strawberries and that's because straw is often used to support the berries. And what that does is it stops them getting kind of wet, splashed up, so it stops them getting mucky but it also stops them rotting if they sit on moist soil or potting mix. I don't have any straw so I'm going to use some hay which is just as good and I'm going to carefully feed it around the plants taking care not to uh, cover or bury the foliage just to lift it up onto it. The strawberries in this pot are hanging over the side so this isn't entirely necessary but I think it gives a really lovely finish. If it's very warm where you are then this will help to shade the soil and keep the root zone nice and cool. And also the lighter colour of the straw, or in this case hay, reflects back some of the light which will actually help the berries to ripen a bit easier. If you don't have any straw or hay for a mulch, you could use, for example, uh, bark chipping, something like that. Anything to keep those developing strawberries nice and dry. There we go, that's all done. All that's left to do now is plant the other one up. And give this a water. Now you can see when I water the plants, that mulch keeps the uh, compost or potting mix from splashing up onto the foliage and fruit, so it's doing its job right there. I've moved them up onto this sun trap patio here because strawberries do perform best in full sunshine at least six hours a day. They will cope with a little bit of shade, but you'll maybe get a less vigorous crop and it won't be quite as sweet and uh, juicy and delicious. This is one of the things I really like about growing in containers. If the space is full in the garden, there's no sunny spots left, doesn't matter. There's always room on the patio and these will thrive here. In this particular location, the paving slabs will radiate warmth back up into the strawberries, while the white walls will help to bounce back light onto our plants. Look at this strawberry pot, isn't she a beauty? Strawberry pots are a really efficient way of growing strawberries. This pot here has one, two, three, four, five plants growing in it, all in this small space. The downside to strawberry pots is that they do need regular watering, really careful watering, because the plant at the top will of course get most of the water. So it may not be ideal if you're not around a lot. Also, the terracotta on this one will wick away moisture, making this less ideal for hotter climates, but I'm happy to water it often and keep an eye on it. If you do have a terracotta pot you particularly like the look of, but you don't want to water quite so often, one thing you can do is either line it or drop a close-fitting plastic pot inside the terracotta pot so you get all the good looks of the terracotta without the impracticalities. You could also plant into a strawberry barrel or try making your own strawberry tower. This is quite simply done by stacking two or three pots of different sizes, one on top of the other, starting with the biggest at the bottom. You can use a cane thrust into the centre of the pots through the drainage hole to keep them nice and level on top of each other. Then you simply plant around the edges with one on top and keep everything well watered and you'll get a really beautiful kind of tiered effect with all those strawberries. Beautiful. Something else you can do is to grow strawberries vertically against a wall or fence in containers or perhaps deep guttering secured to that wall. Choose a sunny spot for this. This is something I hope to do on this wall here and because it's got a, a nice white background it will reflect the light back onto the plants. It should create a really show-stopping effect. Now a few extra things to help you get the most from your plants. First off, keep the potting mix consistently moist by watering regularly. Plants in pots will dry out a lot quicker, so it's important to check them often for moisture. 
The second thing is that birds, well, they love our fruits, don't they, including strawberries. We love birds too, but not when they're eating our fruits. So protect your plants with some sort of mesh or netting secured properly at the sides to stop it blowing off and from birds getting trapped in underneath. Should you let your strawberries fruit in the first year after planting? Well, as you saw, mine were already producing fruits and they're good sized plants, so I'll let them just carry on to maturity. If plants are a good size, just let them fruit. If they're small and they flower towards the end of summer, then you're probably best picking off those flowers to concentrate all the resources into bulking out that plant ready for next season. Pick the strawberries as they ripen and enjoy them as fresh as possible. Don't put them in the fridge, that really kills the taste. Forget the cream, the absolute best way to bring out the flavour is with a little sprinkling of black pepper. Trust me, it really works. Mm. Have a look at this strawberry plant here. It's producing this really long stem, which is called a runner. It's the strawberry's way of propagating itself. They send these runners out, they touch the ground, roots are produced, and then you've got a new little plant. That's all well and good, but we don't want them to be producing runners in their first year. We want to concentrate the plant's energy at this stage to bulking out and growing strong. You can, however, use these to propagate new plants in three or four years' time when the strawberries naturally slow down fruit production. And we'll be covering this in a later video later on in the summer. And then at the end of the season, all that's left to do is cut off the old foliage and just tidy up your strawberry plants ready for next season. Oh, the pure unbridled joy of a just picked strawberry. The best things in life aren't complicated, are they? Now tell me, are you planning on planting strawberries? And if you are, what variety do you hope to grow? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, by growing your own, you can prioritise varieties that have the best flavour. That's the way to do it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we will be revisiting the topic of strawberries later on in the summer. So if you don't want to miss that, do subscribe and turn on notifications so we can let you know once that video and all of our videos are out and ready for you to watch. If you've already subscribed, well, a very big thank you to you. Finally, if you want even more on strawberries, do check out this video. I'll catch you next time.